I'd like to welcome you to this space of remembrance. This is a place to hold your grief, your tears, and your joy as you remember a life well lived and a person well loved. If this is your first time visiting in a Unitarian Universalist congregation online or in person, we want you to know that we are a part of the congregational Protestant lineage of Christian churches, but more than a century ago, we decided that we would rather build our religious community on the promises we make and about how we respect and treat each other rather than on a uniformity of belief. As a non-credal community, we honor religious wisdom and truth wherever we find it, in the great religious traditions of the world, as well as in our own hearts. When we grieve, we use our memorial services as occasions to celebrate the life of our loved one, rather than an occasion for a proclamation of faith. Because truly a life well lived is the ultimate proclamation of faith and Rick led such a life. One filled with caring, consideration, hope and whole hearted love a life of service and respect for others and the interdependent web of life. He was a true friend, a beloved husband and partner, a generous mentor to many, and a dedicated loving parent. He loved each and every person present today, and most especially Christian, Isabel, Rich, and Meta. We honor the fact that each of us here has brought our own spiritual understanding of the mysteries of life and death and will find consolation in those understandings as we work our way through our law. We know very well that death is an inevitable part of our lives. We know as we learn to love one another that eventually our love will include loss and grief because no matter how lucky we are in our lives, no matter how long we live, saying goodbye comes to us. All of our knowing doesn't make it easier. These final farewells always come as a loss for which we feel ourselves unprepared. Being human, we rage, rage against the dying of the light, as Dylan Thomas writes. Do not be perplexed if you're feeling that rage or other emotions now. Be present to them. Accept them. Our emotions are doorways into life's deeper understandings. So let us gather this day, summoned by love, respect, and affection to demonstrate our love for both the living and the dead. Let us gather to comfort one another for we have suffered a great loss. And let us gather to celebrate together for we have been blessed by a life well lived. So with love and gratitude, we gather. May peace pervade this space today and the hearts of all who gather herein, stretching across space and time and the internet. Let us invoke the spirit of life and love in which we live, move, and have our being to be with us in this hour as we give thanks for the life of Rick Lohmeyer. We light this flame as our fervent plea to brighten the dark corners of our hearts. We hold this flame, for in it is the promise of warmth for souls grown cold in loss and despair. We kindle this light, that we might continue to find comfort in its warmth, strength in its light, holiness in its presence. We follow this light, that it might illuminate our search for purpose, for meaning and forgiveness. We light this chalice, knowing even as the sacred spark of life is extinguished in the ensuing darkness its light rick's light will still burn bright with all the memory and hope of its all too brief flash across our lives we light this flame of life of love and truth 
for the divine promise of healing hearts. The details of a person's life can never encompass the meanings of that life, but the details are a place to begin. Richard Royston Lohmeyer, Rick, was born on the 29th of January, 1949, to Jesse and Sarah Irene in Washington, DC. Rick grew up with his mother, who was a war photographer during World War II. Five years later, his younger brother, Jimmy, was born. The family relocated to Silver Spring and Rick attended Bethesda Chevy Chase High School, where he graduated in 1967. Then Rick enrolled at Montgomery College and later enlisted in the Army after scoring really high in the Army entrance exams. Rick became opposed to the Vietnam War and applied for discharge as a conscientious objector. When his request was denied, Rick filed a lawsuit with the District Court of Maryland and won in 1970. Rick was one of the first to attend the Maharshi International University in California when it was established in 1973, where he was introduced to meditation, to transcendental meditation. And meditation became an important part of his life as a result, a spiritual practice that he continued throughout his life. Rick's two children, his son Richard was born in 1970 from his first marriage to Beverly and his daughter Isabel was born in 1984 to Elizabeth. Rick and Netta met in 1993 at a video production company where she was working as a video artist. They were married in 1997. Rick and Christiane met and became friends in 1975, soon after she moved to the US from Germany. They were married at Cedar Lane in 2014 and then renewed their vows in December, 2020. Rick was at the forefront when computers came on the scene. He became a lifelong computer geek and computer whisperer who had this deep intuitive understanding of how computers work and an almost preternatural relationship with them that was sometimes quite scary. He spent almost four decades as a computer engineer and IT consultant, building systems and managing teams to design, sell, and support computer systems for organizations, businesses, and homes, specializing in video, graphics, and multimedia. He was one of the first people in the DC area to market video boards and to do computer video integration across multiple platforms. Rick was introduced to Unitan Universalism in the 1970s, where he found support as a conscientious objector. He was actively involved in the Silver Spring UU congregation before joining Cedar Lane in 2008. As a member, Rick is remembered for doing, well, everything you can do as a church volunteer. Rick was active in adult programs and the Alliance. He served on the adult forum and the Kiplinger lecture teams, taught religious education, the growing up year studying world religions for middle school youth, treated and created and led the AV ministry team. He considered it as a ministry and he led it for many years putting in thousands and thousands of hours to improve AV and technology in so many different ways all over Cedar Lane, installing the new sound system, reworking audio in the chapel and the chalice house and the library, installing video monitors in the choir loft, assisting the forum, visiting those who were ill or infirm, helping grieving families celebrate their loved ones at memorial services by recording the services for them and dancing at parties. Rick 
loved his church community and his faith and gave of himself fully with joy. Christiane used to remark that sometimes she felt like a church widow because of the amount of time Rick liked to spend at church. And so in appreciation of his dedicated and staunch service, the Board of Trustees recognized Rick with the Unsung Hero Award in 2017. Rick was committed to social justice and equity and peace, supported environmental justice and immigrant justice and peace building efforts. He was passionate about human sexuality and sexual freedom as a fundamental human right and the intersection between sexuality and spirituality and politics. He was actively involved in the Woodhull Foundation and supported the work of Planned Parenthood and now the National Organization for Women. Rick enjoyed reading science fiction. He loved listening to Tom Lehrer and folk music, loved photography and traveling all over the world. He was a wonderful handyman who could fix almost anything, an excellent salesman who could sell almost anything, a great negotiator who got away from getting speeding tickets, a computer whisperer, and a total unabashedly proud geek. He was incredibly smart, deeply loving, kind, accepting, compassionate, always positive, and wonderfully inappropriate. Rick died on April 4th, 2021, Easter Sunday, almost four months after being diagnosed with terminal cancer. The last few months of Rick's life was a kind of a pilgrimage, a difficult journey for him and for his family and for everyone who loved him. There are no words that can make the loss of your life's companion any easier to bear. But what we can do is be grateful that we were able to be there with Rick all the way to the end. Even our selfishness at still wanting to be, wanting him to be with us longer, still wishing he would not let go can be forgiven. But my last word today must be about Rick's deep abiding love that would not let us go, let us down, or let us off the hook. His love for Christian and Rich and Isabel and Netta, his many friends and his church community, it is a love that endures. This love is a knot that death has loosened, but it can never be untied and never be cut. We are all woven together into the fabric of Rick's life and his legacy of love. And that is a fabric that we can wrap ourselves in and feel Rick close to us for every day we have going forward. May we be held supported, nurtured, and guided by that love. Amen.
In the fall of 1967, Rick Lomar voluntarily enlisted in the U.S. Army. People nowadays who think of the U.S. as bitterly divided over issues like who won the last election may have trouble grasping what it meant to volunteer for the Army in those days when we'd been bogged down for years in a futile and unjust war. Not only did Rick volunteer, he volunteered for intelligence. He got the serial number RA6800006, meaning, I believe, that he was in the regular army and was the sixth person to volunteer in fiscal 1968. But if Rick could speak Sin like David, he could repent like David. Intelligence meant he went to the language school at Monterey, California. There he studied a language they called, quote, North Vietnamese, close quote, or often just in Vietnamese. That, after all, was what the, that war was about. Whether the provisional temporary split in the ancient country of Vietnam, after the French had had the sense to pull out, had in fact created two nations and two languages, N and S, worth killing and dying to keep separate. Rick soon learned enough about Vietnam to realize he wanted no part of that war. He filed for discharge as a conscientious objector. He ultimately got the discharge, but he had to go to court to get it. And that's how Rick changed my life for the better. I was hanging on to a fairly insignificant government job when one of the draft counselors I knew called and told me he had a soldier in Maryland on his home leave under orders to ship out to Vietnam in a few days. And what could we do about it? I cut my ties with the federal government and went crashing into court up in Baltimore. Rick went through life under the illusion that I was the greatest lawyer since Clarence Darrow and I was careful never to con contradict him. But in fact, it was an easy case. Rick had filed a good claim and had followed all the procedures. The law was on our side. Judges by then had gotten well over any sympathy or support for the draft and the military. And I went on to save several other soldiers, too, from taking part in the war. So I have Rick to thank for one of the most satisfying periods of my life. He and others like him did, in fact, redeem that era to some extent. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Giovanni Galvez and uh, I am related to Rick because I am part of the Ortega family. I am the nephew of Elizabeth Ortega, the ex-wife of Rick Lohmeyer. Now, the first thing I want to say is that um, Rick really was like my big brother when I was a little boy. Um, I remember the first time I met him I must have been like five years old. He came to my grandmother's house in Peru for a Christmas uh, dinner get together. And um, I have a picture of that I'd like to show you. Um, here is uh, an interesting picture. That's Rick. That's the first time I ever met him. Um, and the whole family was there. On the right, you see my, my father and my mother. Um, and I remember. Uh, First thing that struck me about, about Rick was it was the first time that I had ever met um, someone that, um, that basically, um, yeah, he was, he was speaking in Spanish, but he was American. And, you know, even though I was a little boy, like that really impressed me because I always thought that, um, you know, people from the United States didn't speak Spanish. And, uh, it was really a testament of that he really wanted to be a part of our family and uh, and a part of, of the family he was. Um, he really um, became friends. He wanted to talk to people, spend the time. 
fast forward to when I was eight, when I moved to Washington, D.C. And, and came to the United States for the first time. Um, Rick went out of his way to really spend time with me. And uh, he, he taught me quite a bit. You know, he would uh, always come visit and he put me on his bike and he would like take me around all over D.C. showing me the city. Um, he showed me things about technology and computers. And it's really, I owe a lot of my career to him because that's what I do for a living right now. And I, I make a good living. And I'd like to thank him for that. Um, you know, he was uh, my big brother and, and um, he also showed me the importance of, of learning and reading books. And uh, I even remember as a, as a little boy that he would take me to bookstores and he would show me books that he liked that I, you know, I should read. And I, of course, picked up the language quite, quite fast. And uh, one of the books was called Tally's Corner. It was a book about growing up in, 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 in the city um, as a, you know, African-American. And uh, it really uh, opened my eyes to a lot of the struggles that people have, you know, especially poor people um, in, in the urban settings here in the United States. Uh, this is something that I never really imagined before. And, and like other things, I owe Rick um, for this uh, knowledge. And, and I'm always uh, so appreciative of him. And uh, I just want to say uh, on behalf of the Ortega family, um, he's been a part of our lives. He's been a part of mine. I'm going to miss you, my big brother. Um, you're always in my heart. And uh, I, I always feel you near. Every day when I, when I work on computers or when I, I'm trying to figure out a problem or I'm trying to think of the right words, you know, I think of Rick. He's, uh, he's always with me. And, um, and uh, that's my share to you with all my heart. I love you all. You're also my family. If your family's with Rick and if you're his friends, you're my friends. Thank you. Rick was certifiably a geek. Here we are, Geek 1 and Geek 2. Corduroy pants, suspenders, plaid shirt, pocket protector, bat belt, eyeglasses held together with a paper clip. Rick wanted the latest and greatest tech toys. He bought an early carry phone, then a bulky cell phone, upgraded to a flip phone, and then the smartphone era came along. This is one of his smartphones crushed by a car. Geek 1 and Geek 2 had a cat named Scuzzy. SCSI, Small Computer System Interface. That's because Geek One could install many SCSI hard drives in a single machine and magically make them hum happily. That earned him the title Systems Guru. Geek Two used one of the many computers Rick built. I am an unabashed geek, a science and technology geek. I have always been as long as I can remember. I was the kid in junior high who threaded the film through the projector and got it to work. I was always taking things apart and putting them back together, sometimes successfully. My favorite class was always science, and I liked shop class as well. I've worked with computers since the middle 70s and worked at the first business computer store in the Washington area, Computers Etc., in Silver Spring from 1981 to 1984. Rick was proud that he sold the first video frame buffer in the Washington, D.C. area. It is a card that fit into a desktop computer and made video editing on the computer possible. Rick went on to custom build, sell, and maintain video editing systems, and he sold many because he was an excellent salesman. Good techies troubleshoot systematically. Is the unit plugged in? Is the power switch on? And so on down the flowchart. Rick was very different. He could intuitively figure out the problem with the computer, and he was really good. For instance, when the main dealer office in New York couldn't fix a broken computer, they sent it to Rick. He fixed it overnight, and he couldn't even tell you how. Wow, you fixed it? Uh-huh. How do you fix it? I made changes. No kidding, you made changes. So what changes did you make? I don't know. In semi-retirement, Rick helped the elderly with their computer needs. He was passionate about safe computing for seniors. He worried that they may be taken advantage of, and he wanted to make their computers very secure. He created a website called Safe for Seniors and printed business cards. 
He was the computer whisperer. Also, let's not forget that Rick worked about a zillion hours on the AV system at Cedar Lane UU. Rick was married to computers. Look at this ring. It came from a hard drive that I took apart. It is a spacer that fit between two hard drive platters. He wore it for several years. Handsome ring. It's a nerd. It's a nerd. nerdy thing. It's a nerdy thing. I had a surprise for Rick, but never got to show him. This is his 25-year-old laptop, which I last used in 2004. I recently fired it up. It worked. I wish he could have seen it. Maybe he's watching from beyond. Adieu. Bye for now. Rick was my computer guy, my neighbor, and my friend. He was well organized, so he always was available to work on my computers. But more importantly, he was emotionally available. Whenever I had a problem with my computers, he started by saying, how are you doing? He really wanted to know. He cared about me and many other people, and he showed it by being gentle, warm, friendly, engaged, and empathic. I think he made a lot of people feel cared about. He and Chris had a really good relationship. He helped a lot of people at Cedar Lane and before that at Silver Spring Your Church. Rick Lohmeyer, I learned how to uh, operate the soundboard and uh, enjoyed working next to Rick as he was, had this uh, very warm and uh, reassuring aura that everything would be just fine in spite of feedbacks and in spite of the uh, soundboard going completely dead, uh, we would still have a sense that everything would be just fine and it would be, uh, the service would come out all right. And it always did. And I'll miss him very much. And I miss being back in our church and uh, operating the soundboard uh, to the best of my abilities. My name is Lynn Peters. One of my volunteer jobs here at Cedar Lane is serving as a memorial service coordinator. It was in that capacity that I met and worked with Rick Lohmeyer. Rick was one of our AV support people. He made sure all the mics were working and the videos were ready. But more than that, he always talked briefly with the family members, assuring them that what they had requested would happen. He would offer to record the service for them. He was a calm and steady presence. When we are once again holding memorial services inside the building, that is when I will feel his presence. Thank you, Rick. You will be missed. Hi, I'm Mary Morse. I got to know Rick through his work at Cedar Lane, but really it was him as a person rather than his work that I came to value. When talking to him, he always made me feel special and cared about as a person. He was funny and always had an enthusiasm for life. When walking with Rick just weeks before he died, he was incredibly upbeat. He was with, full of smiles and energy. He was a loving, caring, and generous man, and I'll miss him. Hi, I am Mike Morse. I am the titular head of the AV team. Of course, Rick was the real head. I can't tell you how many meetings we went to where people would bring up what I would consider either impossible or unreasonable requests. Rick was the visionary and the dreamer, and I was the pragmatist. So we would um, go to one of those meetings, and they would ask, they would say, we're going to do this, and can you do that? And I would, and Rick would say, yes, we can. Well, I'm thinking, what? And then later I'd get Rick aside and I'd go, Rick, how are we going to pull that off? And he always had some black box, or maybe we were going to come in and uh, run cable all day or something like that. Rick had an incredible capacity to love. He loved people and he loved this church, Cedar Lane. Anyway, I can hardly believe he's gone. I love you, Rick. Rest in peace. That's me, Michael McCrickard. I'm going to take you on a quick tour of what I call Rick Lohmeyer's legacy in the sanctuary. Rick took on all these projects himself and did them for free. 
Rick used a scaffolding and ladder to install both of our remotely controlled video cameras. Rick selected and installed the video monitors in the choir loft. Rick chose, configured, and installed our video hub so that we can send video to the choir monitors, the library, and the chapel. Rick selected and installed the subwoofer to improve our bass sound, including designing and building a custom stand for it. Rick defeated the dreaded 60 cycle hum in our recordings by reorganizing how our components were powered and getting them all on a single circuit. Of all his contributions, it's probably my favorite. One of my favorite Rick moments was the day he received the Unsung Hero Award. Nope. Abby and Michelle Collins played a trick on Rick to get him to come Mr. down Omar. to the stage. I wasn't sure he would Jim fall for it, new, but he totally did. Batteries, and Abby yeah. had to keep Oops. inventing excuses to keep him down there oh, hang on, until Rick, he realized Rick. what was going on. I can't see, so would you... If you don't already know him by name or face, you most certainly know this dedicated member's behind-the-scenes work because he makes sure that our ministers, musicians, worship associates, and others sound loud and clear. Whether you're in the sanctuary, the chapel, the library, the chalice house, please join me in congratulating Rick Mohmeyer. He was so moved. He got pretty emotional about it. It was a great day for him and the team. I will miss Rick. I miss him now. I'll always miss him. And I'll always be trying to learn from his examples of service and kindness. Hello, I'm Richard. Rick's eldest child. I grew up in California with my mother. I was reunited with my father in my early 20s after more than a decade apart. During much of my adult life, I've lived abroad, first in Ghana, then in the UK to obtain a PhD, and later for the UN and Afghanistan and other countries. I work in global public health. I've had the blessing to have extended stays with my father on several occasions. I'm grateful to Elizabeth, Carolyn, Netta, and Chris for their generosity and patience. Those opportunities provided he and I with moments to assess where we were in our lives and for him to guide me. In lieu of the traditional eulogy, I will share a conversation I had with my father in his last days. Because he had great difficulty speaking, I did most of the talking. So this conversation took the form of my thanking him, and then I would offer an associated commitment to him. I assure you that he heard and confirmed non-verbally. The sentences are in no particular order, as I cannot remember the order. I'm proud of you for the services you provided to the church. You were able to save them a considerable amount of money with your technological skills. I will find ways to provide in-kind services to the institutions I care about. I am proud of you for your belief that a broken system can change for the better, despite all of its inherent flaws. I will continue finding ways to support constructive changes that will improve everyone's life. I'm proud of you for believing in the inherent worth and dignity of every human being. I will work towards ways to be more forgiving, patient, and optimistic with others. I'm proud of you for teaching and advocating for sexual health, sexual minorities, and sex education for youth. I will continue to find ways to teach and advocate loudly in these areas. I am proud of you for your boundless curiosity and obsessions with technology and reading. I will continue to find ways to pass these passions on to others. I am proud of you for your interest and enthusiasm in the artistic pursuits of others. I will continue to find ways to shine a light on the efforts and talents of others without judgment. I am proud of you for loving, supporting, and advocating for your friends and especially your partners in life. I will find ways to help the people in my life so that they are better off after having, after having spent time with me. I'm proud of you for the way you manage stressful situations with meditation and thoughtfulness. I will continue to find ways to communicate with empathy, emotional intelligence, and mindfulness in times of duress. I'm proud of you for how you spoke about others, 
with unconditional positive regard and without guile, rumor, or gossip. I will continue to find ways to give others the benefit of the doubt. I am proud of you for being there for myself and others when we needed emotional or financial support. I will continue to try to find ways to support others more selflessly. I am proud of you for advocating for the benefits of professional therapy to confront inner demons. I will work toward gaining the wisdom to know when to participate in therapy and ways to encourage others to do so as well. I am proud of you for setting an example of empathy driven by the recognition that anyone can experience pain, anxiety, and a feeling of worthlessness. I will work toward ways to pause and remember that outward frustration is often driven by hidden pain. I am proud of you for your recovery as the adult child of an alcoholic. I will find ways to encourage others in their struggles with recovery and to remember that the serenity prayer is for myself and everyone. I am proud of you for how you have managed your illness and dying. I will find ways to get diagnosed early for diseases and will not take good health for granted. His reply, whispered with great difficulty, was, I love you, I love you, I love you. Finally, I said to him, this is my beloved father in whom I am well pleased. Thank you all for remembering my father. You are all, every one of you, his legacy. My name is Isabel Lohmeyer, and for those who don't know, I am Rick's daughter. As we gather today around our computers and try to hold each other with what seems like hundreds of miles between us, I can't help but be thankful for the love and light we are still able to share no matter the space in between. It is difficult at best to sit before you and attempt to honor my father in words. It is never an easy task to capture someone in a speech as words frequently fall short of capturing someone's true essence. But here goes. We met on January 8th, 1984. And from what has always been explained to me, it was love at first sight. We were instantly connected and held each other's hearts right there from that moment on. I only had eyes for him. The deep-voiced, scruffy-faced man I was lucky enough to have as my father. Growing up, he lived in Tacoma Park, where I spent most of my weekends. He would pick me up and I will forever remember the smell and sound of those car rides. The smell was of burnt coffee and cigarettes, although he always seemed to spill more coffee in his car than he was actually able to drink. He also had NPR radio on full blast, as if he wanted everyone around him to hear what the top headlines were that day. I would just tuck my head down, make sure to put my seatbelt on because those car rides were like a Formula One race with my dad trying to drink coffee, smoke, and adjust the volume all in one go. He's the one who taught me how to ride a bike and took me all through Rock Creek Park as a kid. He taught me how to make boxed craft mac and cheese, my genuine love for animals, my early obsession with the Beatles and the Mamas and the Papas, the best and only way to make a grilled cheese, it's all about the butter. How to drive stick and the steps to check the oil in my car. Hands down though, my favorite and the most memorable moments we shared was laughter. For some reason, I had the ability to make him laugh so hard that he would proceed to choke and cough uncontrollably. Even after being diagnosed with stage four cancer, we still tried to find the funny side of life. We joked that the food at Walter Reed would kill him way before his cancer. As early as I can remember, when I was upset, he would carry me or sit me on his lap and just gently caress my head for as long as I needed. No interruptions, no distractions. It was just us. The whole world got fuzzy and I immediately melted into him. 
Even as an adult, he would know when I needed that and something so small and intimate, he gave it to me. A few weeks before he passed, he made me promise him one thing that I would be there at the end of his life. I am proud to say that I fulfilled that promise for him. We were together at the beginning of my life and at the end of his. My father showed me a love that can never be duplicated or replaced. He was everything to me. And I will miss him forever. You were smart, funny, and generous in all ways. The speakers before me have addressed your courage, social justice commitments, professional accomplishments, and you as a loving father. In 1975, shortly after I immigrated to the States, you strolled into the garden in Tacoma Park, and we started a conversation becoming good friends, then lovers, that lasted until Easter Sunday 2021. Words cannot express how profoundly I miss you. I long for your physical being, although the light of your spirit is all around. Telling Rick stories now around the fire or wherever they come up, laughter and tears dwell next to each other. Many of you know that Rick was best friends with my late husband, Bob, after he died, you helped me manage. We walked the dog, laughed and cried, renovated, That started our whirlwind romance, which lasted for 15 years. We spent our last year together in our home near Berkeley Springs, the silver lining of COVID. You predicted that I would move there after you died. And truly, you were right. We shared many walks there, sitting around, watching spring, leaping up the mountain. One special memory is watching multiple fireworks around the three-state corner on the 4th of July. We grew closer, enjoyed uninterrupted time, intensified our togetherness, celebrating the mundane and the extraordinary. You gave me innumerable gifts of which your children are the best. I have known Rich and Isabel since they were little. Through the days and nights as we cared for you, we grew closer. I'm deeply grateful to Rich, Isabel, and by extension, Michael, Isabel's fiance. Rick and I have respected your accomplishments and growth and wish you the deep love that we shared. May he watch over you always and wherever I am, we will reach out to each other and find time to be together. I saw your deep spirituality in action as you used your tech skills to grow the scope of the Healy Woodhall Sexual Freedom Summit. There your lifelong interest in human sexuality was shining. But your spirituality found its home in Unitarian Universalism, Unitarian Universalism from California to Cedar Lane. Your engagement with religious education and other social justice actions is legendary at Cedar Lane. Reverend Abi married us in 2014 in a commitment ceremony that embraced our different traditions. As I recall, we laughed a lot. Our legal wedding last December was bittersweet as you were already gravely ill. Memorial services were special to you. As I'm moving out of our house, I found a thank you card from a service you handled. Thank you for your calm competence, for your caring presence, for all your hard work to solve the many challenges we presented. Your reassuring words allowed us to pre prepare a service that lifted people's spirits. And that is certainly our attention for everyone present now. In closing, I want to express a heartfelt thanks to all of you who brought us nurturing meals, sent get well cards, took me out for walks, shopped for us, fixed things in the house, and supported us in every way. Thank you and auf Wiedersehen, Christiane.
Thank you so much for these touching, touching remembrances. I invite you into a moment of prayer with me, a responsive prayer. And wherever you are in the world today, when I hold up my arms, I invite you to say the words in the language of your heart, your presence is near and wherever you are in the world today Rick, we have not when i hold up my arms i invite you to nature, say the word in the language in the whisper of, your heart. of the wind in the your new presence green is near and wherever you are in the world today Rick, we have not when i hold up my arms, arms i invite you to nature, say the not words like you, in the language in the whisper of, of the wind of the desert, in the new the rush of green, the wave in the rise and you are the in the world today when i hold up my arms i invite you to say the we remember the whisper the of the wind in the desert, the rush of the dive, and the rise of the mountain in the world today. We do not hold up my arms. I invite you to say the words. We remember the whisper of the wind in the desert, the rush of the dive, and the rise of the mountain in the world today. Rick embodied so much of our universalist theology, the deep belief and understanding that there is divinity in everyone, a divine spark, a bit of love and grace. And he had this ability to find that in each person he had a contact, he had contact with. He was interested in helping to mine for that bit of love. And everyone who knew him felt it. And gosh, did he love wholeheartedly. As we begin to move forward from this space, may we remember that gift, that deep belief in each person's wholeness and goodness and potential for good in the world that we were gifted with. May we be inspired by Rick's service to be of service in the world. May we be inspired to look at complex 
problems and seek to solve them with wonder and intuition, sometimes even abandoning the rules to do so. May it be so. be a slideshow that we hope you will stay tuned for. And there will be a link in the chat for a special Zoom reception that you're invited to by the family. Thank you.
Oh, <laughs> 